Hi, everybody. We're going to talk about nines. Um, nines are great because there's lots of different strategies we can use to solve them. Um, we can go back to those basic strategies of just making an array and counting them up, but you'll notice that a, a 6 times 9 array is really pretty big. It's easy to miscount if it's something that big. Um, we could also do just repeated addition, 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9, etc. Um, but again, it's a lot of 9s to add up, and we do have some more efficient strategies. So we're going to take a look at a couple. The first one that we're going to look at is a break apart strategy. Um, using fives always make th makes things easier, so I'm going to break this array into two parts. Oops, I made a mistake there at the bottom. Um, so this array now has two parts. Um, instead of it being six times nine, um, I've broken it so that <clears throat> instead of having nine across, I have six times five. And this part is 6 times 4. Um, this is going to make things easier because I can use those smaller, easier facts. So 6 times 5, that's from here, equals, it's an easy fives fact, 6 times 5 equals 30. And 6 times 4, it's 1 6 less, I could count by 6s, um, use any strategy I, I know. And it's 24. So this is now pretty easy because all I have to do is I put those back together with addition. 30 plus 24 equals, well, 0 plus 4 is 4. 3, plus, three tens plus 2 tens is 5 tens. So it's 54. So what makes this strategy helpful is I can take that more complex problem, like 6 times 9, and if I recognize that when I picture this array, 6 times 9 is the same thing as 6 times 5 plus 6 times 4, and I go through that same process again, it really gets much simpler. Uh, because 6 times 5 is 30, 6 times 4 is 24, add them together, get 54. Um, you, the reason I showed you this slightly more confusing way with the parentheses is it's possible that on a test you might see something like that. And you need to recognize that 6 times 9 is the same as 6 times 4, uh, 6 times 5, sorry, plus 6 times 4. Um, and that's called the distributive property. We've studied it off and on. And you'll notice that 9 is the same as 5 plus 4, and we're just multiplying both parts by 6. Um, and that's mirrored exactly in the array here. All right, let's look at the next strategy. Wait, isn't this the same thing? Yes, but we're going to break it apart a different way, just to prove a point here. So instead of breaking it the way we did before, um, I'm going to break it like this. See, now what I've done is I've taken the same array and I found a 5, but I did a different 5. Um, so this is now 5 groups of 9, 5 times 9. And this is 1 group of 9, 1 times 9. So, how does this help us? Well, the same way. 5 times 9 equals, it's an easy fives fact, 45. 1 times 9 equals 9. 45 plus, oops, that's the wrong color. 45 plus 9, well, uh, 9 plus 5 is 14. And 110 plus 410 is 5, 54 again. And the same as in the other one, um, this could be uh, written out with the parentheses and everything, where I take them and I add them together like this. Um, so again, just something to be looking for. And here, again, we'll notice that we broke it apart a different way. It, everything is times 9. If you notice, times 9, times 9, times 9, and I broke apart the 6 into 5 and 1. And that matches what we did down below. 
All right, those first two strategies are sometimes a little confusing, but I think you're going to like this last one. I'm going to solve 8 times 9. Now, first thing I want you to notice is I've drawn a tape diagram, but look, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 boxes. Um, why is that? Well, let's take a look. Um, we're going to be doing 8s here. So I'm going to first make um, 8 times 10. That's what I'm actually drawing here. Now, 8 times 10 equals 80. Um, now, to 8 times 9 is 1 group less, because this is that was 8 tens before. I, I crossed one off. Now there's 9 groups. So what does that tell us? Well, 8 times 9 must be whatever 8 times 10 is, the whole thing, minus 1 group of 8. So 8 times 9 equals 80 minus 8. Now, that's a pretty easy one. I can do that mentally. 80 minus 8 equals 72. But you could use any strategy for that subtraction. And so this can be used with any nines fact. So let's try another one. Um, let's see if I can get a clear space there. There we go. So let's do um, 3 times 9. Well, the strategy that I just learned tells me that that is going to be the same as 3 times 10 minus what? Hmm, what do you think? It's going to be minus 3 because I'm taking away one group of 3. See, it's the same as up here where I had the 8s and I took away one group of 8. I'm going to take away one group of 3. I'm going to put parentheses around 3 times 10 just to help me remember that I'm doing that first. Um, you don't strictly need it in this case but it's still helpful. So 3 times 10 equals 30. So this is now 30 minus 3. 30 minus 3, that's a pretty easy one. I count back or just subtract it mentally. What is it? 27. Let's do another one. Let's do um, 6 times 9. And we solved this one on the last Set. But let's see if you can think through the whole process using this strategy. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause it. I want you to think about what the steps would be for this one, and then come back and check if you do the same as me. Okay, hopefully you really did that. So, 6 times 9 would be the same as 6 times 10 minus 6. 6 times 10 is 60, so it's 60 minus 6. 60 minus 6 is 54. Did you get it right? Um, you could go and try the strategy on some other ones on your own. This is a really strong one. I really like this strategy. This next one we're going to look at is a strategy for making a count by nines. So the first number in our count by nines is 9. Now, what I'm going to do instead of adding 9 is I'm going to recognize that 9 is pretty close to 10. So I'm going to do 9 plus 10, which equals 19. But I added 10, not 9, so now I need to subtract 1. So I'm going to do 19 minus 1, which equals 18. So the next number in the count by is 18. So let's continue. 18 plus 10 equals 28. Oops. And then I still have to take 1 away, because I'm only adding 9. 28 minus 1 equals 27. Twenty-seven plus ten equals thirty-seven. Thirty-seven minus one equals thirty-six. So thirty-six is the next number in the count by. Thirty-six plus ten equals forty-six. Forty-six minus one equals forty-five. Forty-five is the next number in the count by. I'm going to move over to the top over here. So 45 plus 10 equals 55. 55 
minus 1 equals 54. 54 is the next number in the count by. 54 plus 10 equals 64. 64 minus 1 equals 63. 63 plus oops, 10 equals 73. 73 minus 1 equals 72. And this is almost at the end here. 72 plus 10 equals 82. 82 minus 1 equals 81. It even works for that final one here. Let's see. I uh, need to make a little more space. Zoom in. So then 81 plus 10 equals 91. 91 minus 1 equals 90. Whoops. And our count by is complete. The final strategy we learned is the nines finger trick. Um, let's take a quick look here. I have drawn these two hands um, facing away from me, and I'm going to imagine that there's a number above each one. Each finger gets a number. Now this is one that I'd really like you to practice a lot at home. Um, this would be great homework to really master the nines. How this works is I take a problem, let's say 7 times 9, and I count along the fingers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I bend that finger down. or I at least have to keep track of which one it is. So, I bent down finger 7 for 7 times 9. So, now, all the fingers before that one are 10s. So, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I've got to the bent finger now, so it's going to be 60-something. And then, I don't count this one at all, and then the ones past it are 1s. 61, 62, 63. Let's try that again. Let's do 3 times 9. So, I'm multiplying 3 times 9. So, which finger do I put down? It's the third finger. So, I bent part of my third finger down, and let's count across. One, two, sorry, we should count by tens here. Ten, twenty. And I got to the bent finger, so I don't count that one. Um, and let's count across by ones now. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. So, let's make that all nice and smooth. Ten, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So what I'd like you to do is, this would be a good place to stop for a second, and if you're watching with a parent or another family member, um, maybe this would be a good time to quiz and practice on the finger trick, and do a couple of them until you feel comfortable with it, and then come back and watch the rest of the video. The last thing that we want to talk about is some of the patterns that exist in 9. So I'm going to do a count by, and I'd like you to count with me as I make it. Ready? 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, 90. Okay. Now, things that we noticed. Look at the tens place. As we go down the tens place, what do you see? From 9 times 1 to 9 times 10, the tens place increases by 1 each time. Now look at the ones place. What do you see? 
again, in this part of the times nines, each one, we're counting down by one. So if you make a count by nines, this would be a good way to check. Now, here is one of the most amazing things about nines that we looked at. If I add the digits together, so 18, I'm adding 1 plus 8. What is 1 plus 8? Well, it's 9. 2 plus 7? It's 9. 3 plus 6? 9. 4 plus 5? 9. 5 plus 4? 9. 6 plus 3? 9. 7 plus 2 equals? Well, it's 9. 8 plus 1 equals? 9. 9 plus 0? It equals 9. What if we kept going? Does this trick keep working? Let's try the next one. 99. 99, whoops, not an equal sign. 99 plus is 9. We would add the digits and say 9 plus 9 equals 18. Oh, it doesn't work. But wait, it does. 1 plus 8 equals 9. So even with larger numbers, if I keep adding those digits together, if I've multiplied correctly by 9, I'll eventually get back to 9. And that brings us to the end of our video. Thank you for watching it. If you have questions about 9s, um, please feel free to ask. Have a nice afternoon.